Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Today, we're in my kitchen here in uh, my kitchen. <laughs> Today, I wanted to show you how I brew coffee here at the house. I've done a lot of research over the past couple years and learned some little tips and tricks on how to make my brewing better. From what I've gathered, you can have a really good quality roasted and sourced and grown bean. And if you brew it less than ideal, you can have a crappy cup or you can have some pretty average quality beans and brew it really nicely and have a pretty decent cup. I do the best with what I have. So here we are in my setup here in my kitchen and we've got some tools to use. I'm gonna go through that and show you just how I brew coffee pretty much every morning. If you're interested to see a little glimpse into my mornings here at home when I'm not on the road, then keep on watching. First device we have sitting right in front of me. This is by Bodum. It's kind of like their version of the Chemex pour over system. So we've got this handle piece that can come off for when you're washing. This is like a filter basket. I think the intention was that you could brew directly in this, but I don't prefer that method because you'll get little fine grounds. I think they call them like fines that go through the metal mesh and get in the bottom of your cup and I don't like that. And then just a glass craft. Fills about, I would say like 30 ounces worth of coffee. That's what we'll be brewing in today. Another tool that I use is a scale. This one is not anything fancy. It was like $12 on Amazon. It does the job. I don't know how accurate it is, but it might be at least consistent with what it's telling me. So uh, I use that in grams. This side over to my left, your right, we've got two things you can't see. We've got a grinder, and this is the grinder basket that it'll put the grinds in. This has a little magnetic bottom. It'll slip and hold it perfectly in place in the grinder. And then here, sitting on its stand, this is the electric kettle that we used to heat up our water with, and it has some really awesome features. This is actually, these two items are pretty fairly new in my collection. <laughs> they were on my birthday list. <laughs> you can actively see the temperature that it is at, but also you can set the temperature that you want it to reach and two different features. One, it'll hold it for five minutes once it reaches that temperature, or you can have it set to hold the temperature for up to an hour. The only caveat, you just gotta make sure that you turn it off if you have no water in there, or make sure you still have water if you have that setting turned on because you don't wanna boil air. Over in my little basket here, we have some stirring spoons. I have a collection of these stevia packets. Don't really use them that often, but when we do wanna have creamer and sweetener, or if we make lattes or anything, because that's where uh, the espresso maker is, that's where they are. This is a cupping spoon. We won't be using that today, but it's in my collection. Uh, we got a couple scoops. This was meant to be like, you can clip it on a bag and scoop, but I measure my beans with weight rather than volume. Something else we'll be using today is paper filters. The other thing I have over here, this is a ceramic pour over dealio that I got from Starbucks back in the day when I used to work there. I only have it still just because it's easy for like one cup brewing. So it sits on top of your mug and you do it, but I don't like that it only has the one uh, drain hole for into your cup because I feel like it tends to slow down the brew. So you get a lot of extraction time in there, but also sometimes the filter when it's wet with the coffee in it and all the water, it'll create like a vacuum and then all your grounds will get like locked in there. Not a fan. We also have some coasters cause I don't want to ruin our beautiful wood countertop. And then this is my bag of coffee. My, my bag of coffee. Homer's bag of coffee and that's what we'll be uh, 
using today. First thing I'm gonna do is heat my water because it takes the longest. We're gonna start that so it can be ready when we wanna use it. All right, while that's heating up, the next step is gathering and grinding our beans. So then now I just set it on my scale, turn it on so that it's zeroed out at the weight that I want. And then now I'm just gonna fill it with the coffee beans up to 55 grams. And that's what I've calibrated for the amount of water that we brew and our taste preference. All right, now that we've got our weighed out beans, I'm gonna just pour it here into the grinder. I have it set on the uh, grind setting that I prefer. Haven't done too much research and development, but a moderate amount. Um, this company also has a little descriptor in the bottom of the lid that gives you some guidance on like how you're brewing it and then what grind size to do. Then make sure that my lid is flush and then it just magnetizes into the base and then I'll hit the start button. All right, now that the coffee is ground, I'm gonna let it set for a second. In my brain, the static electricity chills out a little bit while I wait. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually wet and rinse the filter so that it gets a little bit of the paper flavor out. And then what I'll do is I will put the filter in here and then run hot water over it, but let it roll into the basket or the craft so that it heats up the craft a little bit as well. So let's go do that. All right, now that that's done, I'm gonna get the coffee grounds. And this uh, grinder actually has a feature on the side where you can tamp it to knock out all the little like staticky bits. Quite jarring in the morning when you're getting ready to leave for the airport at 4 a.m. Now I just will be dumping it in my pre-soaked filter. Give it a little shake to flatten it out. And now it's time for the water. So normally when coffee is really fresh, it will do something called a bloom. This is not my freshest coffee. It's like a week old. So I'm not sure if it's gonna do it today. We'll see, but I'm gonna pour the water on, get all the grounds wet. And some people weigh the amount of water that they pour. I don't, I just get them all wet, wait about 30 seconds, and then I continue pouring. So it's just a little bit bloomy. So it's kind of like, a, I think people explain it like it's exhaling. The CO2 that's still trapped in the beans is coming out. I think the bubbles are actually just it channeling, like there's air in the grounds, but I'll do this for a little bit and then continue with the water. And I'm just going in circular motions all the way until the water's empty. So I have measured out based on some other professionals recommendations and the amount of water that this carafe or that this, the amount of water that this kettle heats up is a good amount for Alex and myself to drink in the mornings, two big cups of coffee, or uh, sometimes if I have like an early wake up for work, I will pour one cup for me to get ready and then I'll pour another into my travel cup to take on my long and lengthy drive to work. And looks like the water's out. Now, as it descends, I don't want it to unevenly extract, so I'll give it a little shimmy so it doesn't like cave in like a volcano kind of. I'll just kind of swirl it and make sure that it's uh, descending, brewing even so that when it gets to the bottom, it'll be hopefully like more of a flat, a flat bed of coffee grounds. So it takes a couple minutes of attention while this is happening, but I'll just give it like two swirls throughout the two to three swirls throughout the brewing, and then I can walk away near the tail end. So now it's like sludge, so it's pretty much how it's gonna be. Yeah. Voila. It is uh, still dribbling down there a little bit, but I don't 
necessarily want or need to collect that uh, bit of coffee because it's at this point all the water that's still going through this coffee is most likely over extracted and that's a little uh, too sciencey for me but I believe it anyway so I'll go set that in the sink let it finish draining in there and then now we've got a nice pot of coffee got our beautiful mug and now all we do is pour and enjoy. Cheers. Just kidding. Definitely can't drink that right now. That is literally everything I do to make coffee in the mornings. I just recently have started trying out some other ways of brewing coffee and one, actually both, are ways of brewing for on the road. So let me know if uh, that would be something of interest because we all know my life is pretty much on the road at all times. I'd love to test out ways to brew quality coffee on the road because as we all have seen, coffee in hotel rooms and airports is less than ideal. A lot of professional coffee drinkers, coffee roasters, coffee brewers, baristas, barista champions have really scienced this uh, craft of brewing coffee. So I've picked their brains by viewing their videos basically and learning by working I only worked at a coffee shop, Starbucks, for two years. So my knowledge is still growing, but this is what I've gathered so far. It works well for us here at home. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you guys have any tips or tricks for my brew setup here, have any questions about more detail, what I did here, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any recommendations, bring them. Um, I'm in the season of research and development for my coffee obsession. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, I would love to hear from you guys. And looking for the future, um, what kind of ways do you guys brew coffee or consume your coffee on the road? I mean, I know it's a little extra to brew coffee by your own means when you're uh, somebody who travels for a living, but because I am a coffee snob, that is my journey. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Thanks for making it to the end. This will be my pre-workout now. Go hit the garage gym. If you didn't hate this, maybe subscribe. Come on, you know the drill. I love you guys, miss you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Toodles.